There are two main types of disc brakes on bikes hydraulic disc brakes and mechanical disc brakes. Mechanical brakes use a cable to actuate the caliper and close the brake pads, whereas hydraulic ones use a hydraulic line filled with fluid. Now, mechanical disc brakes are far more affordable than their hydraulic counterparts. And in this video, we're gonna show you how to maintain them, how to set them up properly. To get the most out of your mechanical disc brakes, there are some components that we'd recommend. First and foremost, cable housing. First and foremost, we'd suggest using compressionless brake cable housing. This eliminates any inline compression of the cable outer and means that all the force when you pull the lever is transmitted through the cable and into the caliper. Now, there's several brands that make this, but just check at your local bike shop and see what they've got. As for the cables themselves, we'd recommend you use a Teflon coated cable rather than just a standard stainless steel one. This is because they run a bit smoother through the cable outer. There's less friction and this results in a lighter lever feel. And for added smoothness, we'd also recommend you can spray a little bit of lubricant down the cable as well. Over time, your brake pads will wear down, so it's normal to have to replace them. Now, different caliper designs use different shape pads, so make sure you research which ones you've got and which ones you need so that you get the right ones. Next, you'll have a choice between different pad compounds on the brake pad itself. So typically, the choice is between either a metallic pad or sintered pad or an organic pad. Organic pads or resin pads are typically quieter and better at dealing with heat dissipation than metallic pads, but they can also wear out more quickly, especially if you're riding in wet or muddy conditions. Whereas metallic pads or sintered pads, they are a bit noisier and not quite as good at heat dissipation, but they can last a long time. Before you adjust anything, make sure that everything on the bike is in order. So check that the wheels are properly seated in the dropouts and also that the disc brake rotors themselves are not loose. You'll also want to check that your rotors are true and are not warped, which means bent in any way. Now to check this, simply look down the length of the rotor and spin it. And then what you're looking for is any lateral movement in the rotor. It's quite easy to see when you do this. You'll see what I mean. Now, if you have any movement or your rotor is slightly warped, then don't worry, you'll need to true it, but we've got a video that can show you exactly how to do that. You'll next want to turn your barrel adjusters fully as far as they'll go clockwise. This allows for adjustment later on. Now, barrel adjusters are usually located on the brake levers themselves, but some calipers such as these also have a second barrel adjuster located there too. You should now be set to start adjusting your brakes. Now there are slightly different variations of mechanical disc brake calipers. Some pull the pads from both sides onto the rotor, some just pull from one side. But broadly speaking, the tips we're gonna go through to set them up apply to all the different types. You want to start by taking your Allen key and then loosening the caliper mounting bolts like so. Now remember when using an Allen key like this, if it's got two ends, you'll want to use the squared end whenever you're putting a lot of force through the Allen key and not the rounded end. That's for just light adjustment. If you use that and put a lot of force through it, you can round out your bolts. The next step is to turn the inner pad adjuster, which can be found on the inside of the caliper, all the way in clockwise and then back it off a quarter of a turn. Next, you want to depress the brake lever. And what this does is now with all the bolts loosened off, it allows you to naturally center the caliper over the brake rotor itself. Now with the brake lever depressed, you want to tighten the caliper in the optimum position. So do the mounting bolts back up again until they're snug. After you've aligned the caliper, you'll want to back off the pad adjustment bolt another quarter of a turn, or maybe just a little bit more until it's no longer catching. The next thing we're gonna look at is lever position and also the lever throw. Now this applies to both flat bar bikes like we've got here, but also drop bar bikes too. You'll want to make sure that the levers have the correct amount of travel in them, meaning that they engage fully about halfway through the stroke. If they engage too soon, you won't be able to get enough pressure through the lever. 
And if they engage too late, then the lever will bottom out onto the handlebar before the brake is fully engaged. If you need the pads to engage earlier, you can adjust them by dialing in the pad adjuster on the caliper. You might find after your initial setup, there's some pad rub. If you haven't got any pad rub, don't worry. You can stop watching the video and go and ride your bike and have some fun. But if you have, don't worry, it's easily fixed and it's quite normal. So you may need to adjust the mounting bolts again by loosening them and just trying to recenter the caliper one more time. We're now gonna talk about pad wear because this is one of the key differences between hydraulic disc brakes and cable disc brakes. This is because cable disc brakes aren't self-adjusting. As the pads wear down on hydraulic disc brakes, they automatically self-adjust and keep the braking consistent. Now, as your pads wear down, you'll need to adjust them to maintain the same level of braking performance. You'll typically know when to do this because the brakes will start to feel a little bit more spongy and you'll probably have a bit more lever throw before the brakes fully engage. You need to stay on top of it because if you don't, then the lever will bottom out against the handlebar before the brakes have been fully engaged. You can dial in the pad and move it closer to the rotor by turning the pad adjustment bolt clockwise, but you can only do this so far. And it's important to note that there are different types of caliper. So on some more advanced designs, there's a pad adjustment bolt for each pad, the right and the left. And on these, you can adjust them both individually. If you've got a more basic design, such as this one, where there is only a single adjustment bolt on the right-hand side of the caliper, then as you adjust it in, you'll have to un undo the caliper and recenter it accordingly relative to the side that you've adjusted. Once the pads have worn down too far, you'll probably find that braking performance dramatically drops off and then you'll just need to replace them by undoing the bolts, pulling them out and slotting in a new set. It's important not to use the barrel adjuster on the cable in an attempt to pull the pads in closer to the disc, as this will affect the lever arm throw on the brake lever itself. Barrel adjusters should only really be used to take up slack in the cable. Right, I hope this has answered your questions and queries to do with mechanical disc brake setup. But if you've got any more questions, then simply let us know down below and on social media.